Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And we are continuing with our series on building apps with XAML and .NET MAUI. The previous couple episodes, we changed from looking at UI to looking at code. We talked about MVVM. We talked about dependency injection. We're going to do one more episode in that realm. We're going to talk about uh, getting rid of code behind and using, getting rid of more code behind, actually, and using commanding. And then after that, we'll return to finishing the UI. Yep. Great. Okay. So commanding. Um, I've got a couple of strong thoughts on this one, so I'm going to present them to you. And okay. people have always kind of had a lot of strong thoughts on whether to command or not. <laughs> Do you have code behind or not? Yeah. But obviously, the idea, like Robert said, is to eliminate the code behind. So, in, you know, in that save button, click the event, we might do view model dot save, but instead of that, what we can do when we set up commands in a view model, I'll show you how to do that. We can directly call that method from the button. We do command equals instead of setting that clicked, and the command is actually bound to a property that we're going to create that then invokes a command. Now, the I command interface is what is used. It is actually implemented in system.windows.input. The command class itself is implemented in Microsoft.maui.controls. Now, you do not want to add that DLL to your view model layer project. I think we talked about this before, how the UI needs to be separate from our class libraries. You shouldn't be adding the Microsoft.maui.controls DLL in your view model layer, because think about it. If you want to reuse that view model in MVC, Right. Why would you want all this baggage? Or in WPF. So in WPF, and this is the other problem, WPF, its command class is implemented in another DLL. So we don't want the commanding to be in our view model layer project. But I'm going to show you a way that we can do this because what we're going to do, we're going to create a user view model commands class in our MAUI project that inherits from our user view model. So we get all the functionality from our user view model, mm -hmm. but we're gonna implement the commanding in this new class and we'll then still bind to this new class, but we get all the features of the other thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this class actually lives in the Maui project, which is where the Microsoft.Maui.controls DLL is already referenced and the system.windows.input. Okay. So there's advantages to using commanding. Obviously, it eliminates events in the UI, and we can directly call methods in the view model. That's mm -hmm. great. Disadvantages is it does tie the implementation of the command class to the view model, but I just showed you, okay, that it's not ideal for tech cross-technology usage, but I saw showed you that we can actually solve this with inheritance. So okay. it actually it doesn't even become a disadvantage anymore. Okay. But you have to think about these things up front. You can't just start throwing stuff into the view model. You really have to think about where is that thing coming from? And am I adding something that is UI specific to that view model, okay? Another disadvantage though, is it's not available natively. Commanding is not available natively in Windows Forms, Web Forms, or WPF. You have to use the community toolkits to get that implementation of commanding. And, the implementation is slightly different between each of the different technologies. So this is why I'm a big proponent of just making your own view model command class in the UI technology and do the commanding there, and then just call the method in your inherited view model. Okay. okay. So the other disadvantage to commanding, the last one, is that it can sometimes be hard. You're going through so many levels. You see this command, save command in the XAML. You have to navigate to that to find the actual property in this view, and then you have to find what method it's calling, which is way down there. So it can be a little hard sometimes to find out which code is actually being called. But, you know, overall, we can deal with this, right? It's not a okay. huge problem, and we can overcome it. That's that's the point. So cool. you just have to architect things correctly, right? <laughs> so, all right. So let's do this. Let's go to our adventureworks.maui project, let's add a new folder called command classes. 
And then let's add a new class called user view model commands. And into this, we're going to put some code. Yeah, I'll go ahead and copy this in. You don't want to sit here and watch me type it all. <clears throat> so here's the way this is going to work. So remember, I'm in the Maui project. The Maui project references the view model layer. So that means that my class here, user view model commands, can inherit from user view model. Cool. Okay. We have the same constructors that we saw in our user view model. If we navigate to that really quick, you can see the same guys here, but the implementation for those are here. Back up here, all we're doing is just calling the base and passing our repositories down. Very simple, okay? And then here is the code that we're gonna write inside of this user view model commands class. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a public I command called save command. And you can see it's a property, right? A get, and it's a private set. We don't really need the set in this instance. And you'll notice that I'm doing a using on system.windows.input, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you remember, and this goes way back, <laughs> the user view model inherits from view model base, which inherits from common base. And in the constructor for common base, I call an init. The init is a virtual method. So init is always gonna get called. If you don't implement it, nothing gets called, it's fine, okay? So what I've done here though, is I've overridden the init. So once the constructor hits, this init gets called, and I now create a real instance of that I command called save command, that property. I'm creating a new instance of it by using the command class, which as you can see, okay, this is one that initializes that new instance of that command class. It actually comes from that Microsoft.maui.controls uh, namespace that I talked about before. And it accepts two, as you can see, two actions, right? So the action is execute. Okay, so this is the part that says, this is what you're gonna execute. And it's the save method. What's, what's the save method? It's coming, as you can see here in the, hard to get there, there we go. It's coming from the user view model. Yeah, okay. So whenever we, say bind this to that save command, it's gonna call this. What is this second function here, this second uh, guy here? This is the one that says whether or not whatever is bound to is enabled or disabled. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. So let's go back over here and let's, let's bind all this up. All right, so we go back to our user detail view and now, <laughs> We have to change this guy again. Okay, command classes. We have to change our view model here. So it's AdventureWorks. Let's see why is that not coming in here. Maui.command classes. Oh, you're right. All right, thank you. Maui.command classes. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then the data type has to change because now it's that one, user view model command. So got to love the IntelliSense. <laughs> I love IntelliSense. Best thing. Okay. Now, nothing else needs to change here, though, right? Because we're inheriting, we still have everything else is, is already yeah. beat up. It's good. Okay. But the save button is what we want to change. We're going to get rid of the clicked. And we're going to do command. Now we're going to do a binding on, there it is, save command. That, that's the property. That's the one that comes directly from that view model class. All right, so we're binding to this. Okay, so I've said return a true here, so that means it's enabled, and it's going to call the save. And if you remember the save, if we navigate to that, it should give us a break. Mm -hmm. All right. So a couple more things. And again, I'm that's not the same. That's the same save method you were just calling in code. Uh huh. View model dot save. Correct. So if we go back here and we go to the code, you can see right there. Oh, I wasn't, yeah. but yes. Oh well, okay. <laughs> but you're right. But see, you that's could've. normally what you'd write. Right. But remember, I just got rid of this, so boom. You don't need any of that. Excellent. We have now eliminated some code behind, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. Okay. Yep. All right. Just a couple more things that we're gonna do. If you remember back in the Maui program, we were taking advantage of the 
uh, dependency injection. Mm -hmm. So, but now instead of user view model, we want to do user view model commands. And you're probably going to have more than one. That's why I called it commands. <laughs> All right, so we're going to change that. Mm -hmm. And then over here in the product detail, if you remember, we were passing this in. I'm going to change these guys. Again, nothing else really changes though because we're doing nice inheritance, aren't we? Yes. Okay. Like and that's the beauty of this. So we're keeping the user interface stuff up where it belongs, but we still have our nice reusable view model that we could use in all these other places, which is great. Okay. All right. Let's try this out and make sure that I've hooked up everything, but everything else should be the same. So we eliminated a little bit of code back here, right? So we got rid of some code behind, which is wonderful. You know, we just changed it out. So we created this new guy here. And then we did the data binding on this property because you always bind to properties. But the right. property, right, because this command object has this ability to execute these functions, hey, we can now call functions. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And I'm going to show you how we can change um, that second one here to make that become enabled or disabled. So we will, we will do that too. So, but first let's just make sure that we got everything working. So we go to the users, we navigate to the detail, you know, we make whatever changes we want to make here, blah, 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 blah. And then we hit the save. And if we've done anything right, we should end up in the view model. In the view model. Be, Perfect. We come up here, we should be able to look at our user object and we see the changes we made. Yeah. Very nice. cool. All right. So when you think about this, this is pretty neat. And this to me was a good compromise, you know, way to do this where I don't have to put any UI code in the view model layer, but I'm still getting all the advantages of it by just doing a little bit of inheritance. So, right. And then uh, what's the code behind look like the moment on that page? So the code behind on this page, if we go here, we navigate, that's it. 29 lines of code. So we're setting a view model, the binding of the view model, and then we're, we're just injecting the view model through dependency yep. injection. <clears throat> yep. Setting that public property, because that's what we're going to use to bind the page to so that the page can take advantage of all of those properties on mm -hmm. that view model. Okay. And you can do that binding context in the XAML as well, right? Is that, is that true? This binding context? Yes. Yeah. I could have actually bound to this because it's public. Right. I could okay. That as well. Either way would work. You got it. Yeah. So we could get rid of a little bit more code. <laughs> so the only code behind here is when the page appears, you get some data. We want to have something that initiates this and instantiates and gets some code. Now, right. you could actually get rid of all of this. If you did the binding context on the page mm -hmm. and in the constructor of the view model, you would actually make the call to get data. Right. I'm not a big fan of that. Right, because what happened? You're in the constructor, so now you got to write try catch, and they always tell you don't write try catch stuff in your constructor. Right, that's what I've always been taught. Okay. So personally, I don't want to do that. This is this to me is a reasonable thing that I only have to yeah. write a couple lines of code here. Cool. So, I mean, you can do it, but you got to be really careful on how things work then, because uh, you know when you're in the constructor, if you get an exception, how do you notify the user that something went wrong? The thing right. hasn't even been constructed yet. The properties aren't available. Okay. So how do you, you know, do, I, it's just, to me, it's a mess. So sure. that's why I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's take a look now at making that button turn off and on. So I'm going to add a private variable here called is save command enabled. Mm -hmm. Name it, you know, appropriately. And then I'm going to create a public property here. Called is save command enabled. And of course, it's got the raise property change because user view model eventually inherits from common base. So I can make that call. Yep. Okay, so now I've got this here. So now instead of hard coding this true right here, right, Ooh. I can simply reference this property and I can mm -hmm. now change this property based on what state I'm in. Okay. Like, you know, maybe if uh, when the user starts typing, you check that and set some dirty flag, for instance, right? Okay. So right now this is set to false. So let's run this.
and we'll drive down here again and we will see that it's false. I can't click on yeah. it. It's false. It's it's disabled. <laughs> so let's say you had some code that then during you know while they're running something happens if you change it to a true value right mm -hmm. then that save button will become enabled because it rereads this because of the raise property change and says right. oh it's now true so wonderful the save button is now ready to be used excellent yeah. all right so i like this commanding yeah. You know, interface. I think it really works well. It's pretty simple. You could see that you might have a lot. If you have a lot of buttons, you might have a lot of these commands here. Yep. But as long as you keep all of the code that does the actual implementation down there in that view model, this is pretty easy to do. So cool. Yeah. You know, we're just continuing to get more and more code out of the UI and out of the code behind and more centralized. Correct. Which then again makes it more reusable and easier to test. You got it. Those are all the keywords right there. Excellent. Yep. And, you know, is it a little bit more work up front? Yes, it is. Okay. But, you know, a lot of this, if you think about it, could be could be generated by a code generator. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've actually written one to, to do all this for me. So I don't, I don't write this code. This boilerplate, add, edit, delete code, I don't write. I just, I use my PDSC developer utility, which is free. It's out there on my GitHub. Uh, so you just look me up on GitHub, Paul D. Sheriff, and you'll find me out there and you can download the tools. You can try this out and generate a CRUD application in Maui for any cool. table in any day in your SQL Server database. So give it a try and then take a look. You'll see the code looks exactly like this. Excellent. Yeah. And then once you learn how to do it once, you can repeat over and over again. Right. Right. Cool. Very okay. nice. All right. So cool. we're nearing the end of this series. In the next couple episodes, we're going to go back to working on our UI. Yep. All right. So we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.